Washington state in America is the home of the infamous Mount St. Helens, the cantankerous volcano that regularly vents pent up energy from beneath the Earth's crust. Its fearsome reputation is rivaled by nearby Mount Rainier, which every year claims the lives of people who get too close in avalanches and blizzards. It's one place in America where the raw power of nature is very evident, a power which man is now trying to harness. This is America's Windy Hill, one of the windiest places in the United States. Here, for more than 60% of the time, the wind blows at speeds in excess of 25 kilometres an hour, much of the time it speeds up to 90 kilometres an hour. So it was the logical place for this country's first wind farm. Here, the Bonneville Power Authority, the Department of Energy, the Boeing Engineering Company and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration have combined to build three of the world's largest wind turbine generators. Combined, when the wind is blowing and when the windmills are turning, they put into the Klickitat County grid more than seven and a half million watts of electrical energy. But even here, the wind is not always in harmony with the surroundings. Today, as only the Americans can do it, is the big day, the day when the wind farm gets its wings. the start, we believe, of a new age for the Pacific Northwest, an age of active conservation and of renewal. Three years resources. after the project started, the world's first intensive effort to reap the power of the wind is about to get official blessing. But even in this windiest of environments, the winds of change can be contrary. Three, two, one, mark. The balloons went up, but the only thing turning was the clock. Today was not to be the answer to the prayers of those who'd waited so long for the big machines to turn. But in this windiest place in the country, it's only a matter of time. When they turn, they really turn, at 17 RPM. The huge blades weigh 90 tonnes each. They're 100 metres from tip to tip, and the dynamo they drive is 75 metres above the ground. In horsepower, the energy they produce is more than 3,000. And the noise you can hear, that fascinating swishing sound, is because the tips of the blades are moving through the air at speeds in excess of 300 kilometres an hour. And just the very force of the wind against the 200 foot high mast holding that huge blade is making the top of that mast move backwards and forwards, anything up to a metre. And so while the blade is turning at this speed, 17 and a half times a minute, at the moment, this wind turbine is putting into the county electrical grid system two and a half million watts of electrical energy. The wind generators are proving that it is possible to generate appreciable power from the wind. They're fully computer controlled. Their speed is regulated so that the power they produce is synchronized with the county grid. The giant blades are fitted with outboard paddles like ailerons on an aeroplane wing and they're angled by the computer to give exactly the correct speed of rotation. When the wind speed reaches gale force, they automatically feather to stop the machine and prevent it from destroying itself by overspeeding. And while the huge dynamos are feeding their megawatts of power into the grid, the hydroelectric power stations in other parts of the state reduce their load, conserving the water used to drive them for use later when the wind does not blow. Here is the answer to the most difficult question. How do you store the power from the wind for use when the wind ceases to blow? These mills will mean hydroelectricity can be saved to fill in the gaps 
and the world's first wind farm can make a practical contribution to attempts to harness the power of nature.